this, this uh, talks about some of the physiologic changes that happen in pregnancy. And so as, as usual um, with these things, this is health information that's supposed to be for just education. It's not, not meant in any way um, to guide a, a treatment decision or to be used to try to diagnose what's um, going on with yourself. If you have a problem, you need to see a doctor. It's just for learning and for thinking. So the changes in the physiologic parameters um, of pregnancy. So this, this chart is meant to show in general things that are increasing and de decreasing and talking about how they're connected to each other, not sort of um, super accurate absolute numbers. We'll start out here with the um, respiratory system. So MV is minute ventilation and TV is tidal volume. You have uh, an increase in tidal volume during pregnancy. And so what tidal volume is, is just you know, how much you're breathing in and out. What's that volume? And so as you can imagine, if that increases and you have a given respiratory rate, you multiply the volume times the rate to get the minute ventil ventilation. So that goes up. Alveolar uh, ventilation is also dependent on the tidal volume. Alveolar ventilation increases. And what that does is the P big A CO2, so the CO2 in the alveoli, is decrease it. So the, the term for breathing uh, more hyperventilating and having a drop in your uh, PaCO2 is a uh, respiratory alkalosis. Right? And so this, the, these changes are believed to be driven by um, increased levels of progesterone. Cardiac output that increases during pregnancy. So that's the cardiac output. The components of that are stroke volume and the rate. So those things go up to cause a bigger cardiac output. You also have increases in the plasma volume and the GFR. I think it makes sense that those two go together a little bit. You have a bunch more plasma. You probably need a higher GFR uh, to filter it. BUN and creatinine um, decrease slightly, both by about 25% in pregnant people. And so you have this plasma volume go up, and you might be wondering about what happens to the red blood cells, the count of them or the volume of them. Well, they also increase. Red blood cells count or volume goes up, but it's not enough to keep up with this plasma increase. So you have a, a dilutional anemia. So the hematocrit drops um, to the low, into the low 30s, whereas normally the low normal value for um, a woman would be 36. So you can have norm, it's normal to have um, hematocrits below that when somebody's pregnant. And again, that's because the increase in the plasma sort of outpaces the increase in the RBC count. The SVR and the BP, the blood pressure, they decrease in, in pregnancy. And so they reach a, a bottom out or an ADR around 20 to 24 weeks and then slowly go back towards normal, but should not, not get above where the person was before um, before they were pregnant. So I think that covers the major um, changes in, in the organ systems, and what's left to talk about is the um, endocrine changes. So the placenta, when you think about it, I think most of us think about it as a sort of interface for the exchange of like nutrients and oxygen and sort of the connection between the mom and the fetus, and that's you know, perfectly good way to think about it, and it's you know, true. But it's also, if you think about it as a temporary endocrine organ, because it has lots of endocrine functions. And the very first one happens before it's even called a placenta, right? You have the um, fertilization, then you have a blastocyst form, and you have the trophoblast cells on the outside of it. They're going to differentiate into the cytotrophoblast and syncytotrophoblast and make the placenta. And they start producing um, the HCG right around the sixth day um, after ovulation in the case of um, a pregnancy. So this HEG is one of the very first um, endocrine-type functions of the placenta. It simulates the corpus luteum to produce the progesterone, which is very important for keeping the endometrium intact and also estrogen. So this um, endocrine function uh, is the initial event. It allows the pregnancy to be maintained, the corpus luteum to produce the progesterone and the estrogen. Then eventually, as the placenta develops, by the end of the first trimester, you know, week 12, the, the corpus luteum degenerates and the placenta takes over the responsibility of making the progesterone and the estrogen. And so these levels um, rise throughout, th throughout the pregnancy and they're made um, by the placenta. Um, prolactin levels um, also rise th um, throughout pregnancy and I wanted to m make a special note about sort of the third hormone that the placenta makes that doesn't get talked to right about as much and it can be kind of confusing. So that's human placental lactogen, HPL. So there's two functions to know about with the human placental lactogen. And so one is the increase in lipolysis. So lipolysis is taking a triglyceride, glycerol, and three fatty acids and breaking it up into its components. So that increases in human placental lactogen also causes insulin resistance, interferes with the function of insulin, and so has a contribution to um, gestational diabetes. And the uh, a thought about why human placental lactogen might cause an increase in lipolysis is you have more um, 
fatty acids that could they could go into the um, TCA cycle, or they could also be used to make ketones. That sort of provides more energy and might free up more um, glucose for uh, the fetus to use. So that that's those are the um, major endocrine functions. And we talked about what the change in the organ system. So that's that's the majority of it. Some sort of odds and ends are increased carpal tunnel syndrome in pregnant people. That seems to come up a lot. Um, it's hypercoagulable state, and then there's a difference between morning sickness versus hyperemesis gravidarum. And so, how do you decide what's no, sort of normal morning sickness versus what's uh, this this condition? And the way to decide is if the person having weight loss or the person having ketones, um, then it's hyperemesis gravidarum. So this is that was a brief procedureready.com talk about the um, about the physiologic changes in pregnancy. Thanks for watching. Always um, consider going to procedureready.com for more. Um, videos like this and um, consider going to 52kids.org and making a donation. Thank you. Bye.